Could the DC Metro get a loop line? This is L'Enfant Plaza station on the DC Metro, and it is one of the coolest stations in the entire system. Most underground metro stations in DC have platforms placed in a tall, round vault. It's an unmistakable characteristic of the DC Metro. L'Enfant Plaza is no different, except this station has two tubes that meet together in the middle, in a plus shape. That's because this is an interchange station. Green and yellow line trains use the top floor with two side platforms running north-south. Orange, silver, and blue line trains use an island platform on the bottom floor that runs east-west. Transferring between lines could not be easier, as the trains basically run in the same underground space. All you have to do is take the escalator. This design is also seen at Metro Center, and a very similar design exists at Gallery Place. In the future, downtown Washington could see more of these interchange stations, but more on that in a little bit. Of course, with five different lines coming together here, there's a lot of places you can go. Let's say that I want to go to the Pentagon to see where those $860 billion are going. Or maybe I want to go to King Street in Alexandria to spend a similar amount on some Italian food. Of course, the quickest way to get to those two places would be to take the Yellow Line from here. The Yellow Line immediately crosses the Potomac River after leaving L'Enfant Plaza. The next stop is Pentagon in Virginia. It's a matter of minutes, and it gives you beautiful views of the city, including the Jefferson Memorial and the Washington Monument. Or, if you want to add an extra eight stations to your itinerary, you could also take the Blue Line. Now, through Washington, D.C., the Blue Line shares tracks with the Orange and Silver Lines, and it's actually my favorite segment on the D.C. Metro for many reasons. The orange, silver, and blue lines cross the district in an east-west direction, and they serve all sorts of convenient spots. Places where people live, like Capitol Hill and Foggy Bottom, places where people work, like Federal Triangle and Capitol South, and places that are interesting for tourists, like the Smithsonian and the White House. But my favorite thing about this line has to be the frequency. With three different services converging onto one set of tracks, it means that the trains are always running really close to each other. In fact, I almost never have to wait more than three minutes to catch a train on this shared section, even on the weekends. But there is trouble in paradise. We've made it to Roslyn, and let me tell you all about it. The tunnel from Roslyn under the Potomac to points east is reaching capacity. It can handle a maximum of 26 trains per hour per direction. Though we're not at those frequencies yet, Metro expects to reach them in the foreseeable future as demand continues to rise. Crowding may become unmanageable by 2040. Three lines sharing one track means that once you've reached the maximum capacity on the shared section, you cannot add frequencies to the individual branches either. They're always only going to have one-third capacity of the combined section. Furthermore, a line shared with three services is a bit of a liability. A delay here can affect services here, 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 and here. Luckily, Metro has a plan. Well, several plans actually. Let's take the blue line to the end of the line and I'll tell you all about it. This is on Lincoln Cemetery. Thank you. 
doors opening on the left. So this is Franconia Springfield Station, the southernmost station in the entire DC Metro network. We are really far from DC over here. You know, I was surprised to see how many people actually stayed on the train all the way to the end. So remember how way back at L'Enfant I said that there may be more transfer stations like it in the future? Well, Metro is obviously aware of the capacity constraints that I mentioned earlier, and they are working on several plans to fix it. I'm going to quickly explain these different plans to you, and we're going to focus on the last one, which that's the one that I am most excited about and that I really hope is the one that they select. Metro has been developing multiple scenarios for how to solve these problems and has added expected price tags as well as estimated number of riders to each project. Nothing is set in stone. They could build nothing at all, or they could invest billions of dollars into building a more future-proof, more equitable transit system. The decision will be made this fall. The cheapest option would be to just add more buses. However, this would only work if the bus trip were to be so fast and smooth that it would lure people out of the train and onto the bus, a scenario I find highly unlikely. More likely is a new tunnel through DC closely paralleling the original. Roslyn would become the interchange station, and then the new tunnel would cross under the Potomac. It would serve a few neighborhoods currently not directly served by Metro, like Georgetown and the West End, as well as convert some existing stations into interchanges. After Union Station, there are multiple options. The line could go to Greenbelt, it could go to New Carrollton, or it could duck south, serving Capital South, Navy Yard, and new stations at Buzzard Point, St. Elizabeth's, Bowling Air Force Base, and Forest Heights, as well as Oxon Hill and the National Harbor in Maryland. It would then cross the Potomac and reach the current Huntington Station. The new line could become part of the Silver Line or the Blue Line. One proposal would see half of Silver Line trains run as express for a brief segment before all Silver Line trains would head into the new tunnel and end up at Greenbelt. This proposal would cost the most, at nearly $40 billion. I don't know, it's not a bad plan, but I think the local slash express service is just a little complicated. And also, people living in suburban Virginia just got a brand new transit project, the Silver Line. Cheaper alternatives would see either the Blue Line run to Greenbelt or the Silver Line running to New Carrollton. Both projects would cost between $25 to $30 billion and generate 90,000 new trips a day. The clear winner mathematically is to introduce a Blue Line loop. Bloop. Service between King Street Old Town and Roslyn would be the same. Then, trains would take the new tunnel to Union Station, head south, enter Maryland, and then cross the river to Huntington in Virginia. This would cost between 30 to $35 billion, but it would generate 180,000 new weekday trips, double some of the other alternatives. So while Franconia Springfield is the current terminus of the Blue Line, if the loop were to be completed, then it would be yellow line trains that would come to Franconia Springfield because the branch to Huntington would become part of the loop. This is also the clear winner for me. It would serve underserved areas, it would completely separate the blue line from silver and orange, relieving capacity, it would create the most interchange stations, relieving pressure on the existing ones, and it would open so many new doors for connectivity. It would be the first time you could take Metro from Maryland to Virginia without passing through DC.
But wait, isn't Metro approaching a $750 million fiscal cliff? How could they ever afford this? Well, when we talk about Metro's fiscal cliff, we're talking about operational funds. Money that they use to run trains, pay their employees, etc. While it is important that this issue is resolved as quickly as possible, extensions like these fall under capital funds. If Metro picks any of these extensions, a new funding plan would be developed. Capital projects are essential because only with a future-proof system can you deal with future problems. So why do I support the Blue Line Loop option? Well, first of all, the math seems to add up, but aside from that, imagine being here at King Street in Alexandria and needing to go to Maryland or the U.S. Capitol. Instead of going all the way through D.C. like you do now, you could just take a metro train straight towards Maryland or the eastern part of D.C. And I think that connectivity is going to be awesome. Don't get me wrong. I don't think that the people on the other routes don't deserve good transit. In fact, I'd love to see the other connections built someday as well. I just think that the benefits of the Blue Line Loop are obvious. Many of the greatest cities in the world have transit lines that run in loops. Just think of the Yamanote Line in Tokyo. DC deserves to be one of those cities, and it would create a million new opportunities for travel.